One year ago, we bought a neglected farm in the Alta Langa, Italy. She was built in phases between the 1800s and the 1970s and hadn't been lived in for some time when we moved in at the end of July 2023. The house and multiple outbuildings came with 16 and a half hectares or 40 acres of land. And while we have shown you around the buildings, we have never taken you on a proper tour of our terreno. First, let's have a look at the property as a whole. The land is mostly in one piece, with a mix of terrain, including both gentle and very steeply sloped areas, meadows, forest, abandoned vineyards, an old hazelnut grove, and an olive grove in desperate need of some love. The house sits in the middle of all that, on the ridge of the hill. Several roads cross the property, both public and private ones, old and overgrown, as well as newly asphalted. The land is further structured by dry stone terraces. We've calculated there should be around four kilometers of dry stone wall on our property, at least. But every single day we are falling more in love with it and managing our 40 acres so far is working out well. We'll take you around the property starting in the west and ending in the south. This is the view you probably recognize because it's our favorite spot to watch sunsets. With a piece of land as big as ours, it's almost impossible to not have any roads cross it. The location of our farmhouse on top of the hill has the most panoramic views, but it's also the best spot for a road. The road was the one and only downside of the Kashina for us. However, it's a dead end road that has very little traffic and it also definitely has an upside. Municipal roads are cleared when it snows. Since living here, it has barely bothered us at all. And in the future, we will continue planting hedges to create more privacy and honestly, mostly so that we'll see greens instead of the asphalt road. On this side of our property, there are some terraces and a few meadows. The little church on the rock isn't ours. One chapel is more than enough, I suppose. Then there's also this plot of arable land behind me. It's about two acres. We have an agreement with a neighbor farmer that he can use this field. He's currently growing alfalfa here, but when we bought the house it had corn on it. Between the house and the chapel, there's a public footpath that you can see over there. Before the village got asphalt, this used to be one of the two main roads from the village to the farms below us.
now it's only used by the very occasional hiker in the summer. We're going to be planting a hedge alongside the footpath over the years with a mix of species. We're starting with a bunch of seedlings from our Japanese quince and lilac bush, but we'll be adding elder, privet and hawthorn too. Our intention is for it to be a diverse flowering hedge that offers food and shelter to bees, birds and other creatures on our land. We're not going to fence off all of our land, but we will look into ways of fencing off the areas around the house. This is mostly for safety, to keep hunters out during the hunting season. In Italy, hunters are allowed to hunt on private land as long as it's not fenced off. However, that's still a lot of kilometers of fencing, so we can't do it all in one go. We want to mostly use what's available on site and create dead hedges, wattle fencing and living hedges. When you keep walking this hollow road down the hillside alongside the dry stone wall, you arrive at another one of our fields. So, what are we going to do with all these fields? Except maybe some goats and sheep in the future? One of our neighbors, who is a farmer, is mowing our fields for us which saves us a lot of work and for him means additional feed for his cows. We are still learning to identify all the tree species that grow on our land, but bordering these fields we have European oak, walnut, chestnut and a lot of wild cherries. I really love the wild cherries because in spring they have the most beautiful blossoms and in fall they have the most beautiful bright red foliage. This field behind the house used to be a hazelnut grove. In some weather conditions you can still see the proof of that from the drone. The circular marks in the field are where hazels used to be. Hazel trees were planted here in a round shallow hole that helped them collect rainwater. Bordering this field there's a bit of forest with oaks among other things, but also invasive robinia trees. We want to take a few of those out, not all of them, but just to keep the population in check and to open up the view of the Alps. Because behind me there's the full range of the Western Alps with all the peaks and the, the Matterhorn is over there and the Mont Blanc is over there and it would be so nice to be able to see those from the house because they are so beautiful. While Robinia is on the invasive species list for Northern Italy, the flowers do offer food to bees and other insects in the spring. On the east side of the property, next to the old chapel, is where the previous owners used to have their vegetable garden. It's a pretty flat piece of land with good sun exposure all day round and there's a natural water source nearby.
We discovered that the Google Street View from 2011 shows a vegetable garden, so we'll add in a screenshot of that later. This is probably the spot where we'll be creating a kitchen garden, as it's close to the house. We've talked a little about this in our December Q&A video, and we won't be starting with growing vegetables this year, as we feel it's just one thing too many on top of everything else, but it's definitely going to be in our future. The spring sits in a field that belongs to a neighbor, but the spring itself belongs to us. The water is collected in a big 3x3x3 three by three by three meter cistern. Oh, it's from the metal Not super makkelijk. Oh, it looks like it's still about half full. I can just about see the bottom with the torch. Between the old veggie garden and the cistern, there's an old road, the old main road that goes up to the village. You've definitely seen us walk here before because it's the route that we always take when we go to eat out in the village restaurant. Oh, the first primroses! Look! <laughs> Yeah. Next to the road, there's an old hazelnut grove with old hazel trees um, that we'd like to use for coppicing. Hazelwood is great for fence making and to build supporting structures in the garden, and it also makes a good firewood. For those of you who've never heard of coppicing before, it's a traditional forestry practice where you prune back trees in a yearly rotation system, allowing them to grow new branches over time. It encourages the tree to grow many thin branches rather than one massive trunk. For firewood, this is really practical as you don't need to split the logs. It also creates a particular ecosystem that is a great living environment for many species that thrive in open woodland. In this um, south-facing slope uh, across the street from the house, we plan on planting berry shrubs like raspberry, blackberry, blueberry, etc. And as you can see, it's uh, pretty steep, so we want to build some terraces, small terraces, so that we can easily plant and access and harvest the berries. So we're not going to do that straight away, maybe sometime over the winter or over next spring.
There's a private road here that leads to the olive grove and the terraces below. You can't see much of the olive trees now, as they have suffered quite a lot over the past 20 years. My guess is that they were planted around 2003-2004, because at that time there was a mass planting of olive trees happening all over Piemonte. Olive trees had not really been grown here before that time, but a group of olive tree enthusiasts carried out research to find the most frost-resistant species that had the potential to thrive in this area. I did some research and it's very well possible that our olive trees are some of the highest in the region. Most commercial olive groves around us are situated around 200 to 350 meters above sea level. We'd really love to revive this small olive grove. Being able to use our own olive oil in the kitchen sounds really wonderful. Uh, but it's one of those jobs that's not sitting really high on our urgency list. It will definitely be one of the first terraces that we clean up though. Today we're going to the lower part of the southern slope. This part of our property is currently best accessible via a small detour. We do have a direct road over our own land, but that's very overgrown with brambles in a few places at the moment. Originally, most of these terraces were meadows and fields. But after a few decades of neglect, the forest has been taken over. We're taking you to the best kept secret of our property, a little off-grid cabin in the middle of the woods.
From a cadastral map we already knew that there is a cabin here, but it has taken us quite some time to figure out how to reach it. It's at least a hundred years old and it roughly measures 5 by 10 meters. Half of it is ours and the other half belongs to an as yet unknown owner. Some of the lintels have been feasted on by bugs and need replacing, but the roof, somewhat surprisingly, is still in place. Half a century ago, there were vineyards and fields around this cabin. Maybe they used it as a place to stay while working on the grapevines and as a seasonal pasture. Probably the foundation wasn't strong enough or the soil has moved, causing two big cracks in the wall on the front. We'd love to restore this cabin, or kashinot in Piemontese dialect, one day. It would be perfect for picnics, summer barbecues and quiet offline retreats. cliffside behind me is the southernmost border of our property and as you can see 
uh, with a cliffside like this you can't really cultivate it. So even though the cadastral map shows we have 40 acres, at least a few of those are really uh, steep slopes and rocky cliff sides that you can't use for anything, but that don't require any maintenance either. So after a good six months of living here, we are slowly starting to piece together in our minds where all our plots of lands are, the characteristics of each of them in terms of sun exposure and microclimate and soil, what they are suited for and how we want to perhaps use them in the future. Our old garden in the Netherlands was 50 square meters big and to manage a backyard of 40 acres is an ongoing process with lots of learning on the way.